Hello, hello, and welcome to vlog number 10. All right, let's get into it. Last week and this upcoming week kind of blended where I had a lot of stuff going on, and then uh, tonight is Sunday, and then tomorrow, Monday, and then Tuesday, I have two shoot days. So, um, and sorry, and on Friday, uh, so not this last Saturday, but Friday, yes. I shot a music video and I shot, um, I was second shooter for a wedding um, with Ben at Morris Media. So I'm not going to go into that stuff because I want that to go into the next vlog, a whole lot of stuff to go through. Um, and I have some things that from earlier last week that I think are going to be a little bit more interesting. So starting off on um, the previous Friday, I had my... Uh, third shoot day with uh, that landscaping company and um, you know went really well so I explained it in the first one but the quick recap is that they had three shoot days where uh, they're paying for me to have a second shooter and so basically a second hand for the day and then um, like like that one's just all the equipment um, so first film day was pull out like a full shoot day right second was just me so it's the discount rate but also it's not as intense there's not as much equipment um it's just me so this was the second of the full shoot day um and as you can see i got uh my buddy ben morrison media shout out um our schedules have just really like synced in very beautifully um and with this job in particular the scheduling of it is kind of fast and loose because for them they they're shooting to be finished with projects at a certain time but um weather will totally throw off a day right um you know if you have issues with the the crew or you know you're just getting equipment out there so is it frustrating that it's been difficult to nail down dates to a degree yes obviously um but they've also been very flexible on their end with me as well so it, it's a give and take um and uh, i've just been very lucky that for ben's schedule it's been you know flexible to work out with this as well so anyways um that being said i think really the big thing is um you know going out there i've been getting a lot more comfortable with shooting handheld um and you know the trinity system that i have is awesome and great and i love using that but um you know the I'm, I'm kind of trying to figure out right now how do I properly structure it so that the skill of using that, getting good shots, is uh, worked into the price. I, I'm sure there's an answer. If you have an answer, please comment below. I would love to hear kind of how you structure, you know, maybe uh, using different equipment um, and adding that to the, you know, the budget or stuff like that. So um, I say that to say this. The handheld stuff is awesome. It's building, I think, a skill that I never really focused on, which um, I feel kind of silly about, but also um, it really does fit with the vibe. Um, the type of stuff that we're getting from these shoots, I think works really, really well, uh, especially in tandem with the Trinity system. I'm using a lot of times to get more smooth moving shots and just like really particular angles or you know movements that I wouldn't be able to get with the handheld. So, I suppose moral of the story with this is that uh, continuing to learn that like each piece of equipment should be used in a certain way and knowing when to pull that trigger instead of looking at the Trinity system as the hammer and everything is the nail. So that's that. Um, and you know, the one thing that I really have been finding the value in of having a second shooter is that when you're working with somebody who is an experienced, you know, videographer, they know what it's like to edit stuff. Their experiences are incredible to add into yours. So there was a moment where it was just like, we still had like an hour left to shoot and I wasn't exactly sure what to, um, you know, what to focus on because we'd already gotten all the stuff we'd set out to do. We'd marked off all the things on the checklist of, we got the shots we needed. Um, and Ben had decided, or Ben had brought up the idea of using the tripods to get like very specific tripod shots. Um, and then talking with the crew and just getting some of them to talk about like what they're doing. And to a certain degree, like once he said the ideas, it was like, oh, doy, like why, why would that never even enter my mind to do? Um, but you know, we live the life that we live. So having that was 
really great for the shoot. And then also just the ability to not be so stressed out on a shoot. So I'm gonna come back to that at the later job. Um, but more of the story, second full day of, or like full production day of filming with them went off great. We've got pretty much one more day of that. And then that job is wrapped. I can start editing um, and I'm really pumped about that. So, all right, that's one. Um, the next was then I went up to uh, Eau Claire and met with the executive director about our um, upcoming symphony shoot in December. So my main takeaway uh, with them is that prepping and having those conversations with your client and opening the door to like good confrontation, you know, um, and I don't even think there was any confrontation, but I think sometimes if you're an agreeable person like me, you can take what somebody says that's very like direct and pointed and it's just like, hey, do this or I'm looking for this. I don't want to question it. Like, can we just do that one thing? Um, blunt and direct conversation can sometimes maybe feel like they're being confrontational, but um, really just logically listening to what they're saying. And is there an answer to that? Yes or no. Um, just really, it helps you figure out what you need to do and, um, and what things are unnecessary. You know, asking her some, some questions that I was excited I, I think there was like, I'm trying to think, there was one question where I was excited to talk about like transitions and certain things that maybe we could get with the type of footage that we were um, thinking of, you know, capturing. And she was like really not about it and um, didn't, she didn't see the end product to have those type of things that I thought would be flashy. But once we talked about like what her vision was and what she was hoping to get out of this, um, I was like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Like this, why would why would I do that? That doesn't make any sense. So, anyways, um, it was a great meeting. She's an awesome executive director. I'm really excited to work with her, um, and I think that's just something that, like, that that comment is for anybody who's like me, who, like, especially, just I think to your core, you have an agreeable nature, and sometimes having what could be a you know a difficult discussion, you want to avoid. Um, and really just always pushing to have any conversation that you need to make the project better, easier or hard, whatever happens. So that's what happened there. Um, the following day, so that was Tuesday and then Wednesday, I went um, to a gym to film uh, just footage. That's it. So that's a service that um, I really, I think there's a marketing power and value to it. Um, to working with people. So the quick skinny is that uh, this gym, the owner, were, so this is a free job and I say free, it's a job with a trade. So I'm giving him footage of the interior of his place for website, social media, that type of stuff, and then like some detailed stuff. And then he's gonna put my like logo and I'm creating like a short little, uh, not ad, but, um, but yeah, and add, you know, name, this is what Blue Tie Productions does. And he's gonna put that on the on their TVs in the gym. And then, so he's gonna do that for three months and then social media. Like we have very specifically agreed, like when he posts stuff with my footage, I'm gonna like share it, comment, whatever. I'm just gonna do social media stuff with them. We're gonna share the content that way. We're both promoting our businesses and doing that. So I think the real key to that is like doing my part of the bargain. Social media is not my strongest suit. So um, really making sure that I'm like checking in, seeing if you know they've used the footage and making sure to share that. So, um, so there's that. And I also wanted to just show like me using the Trinity system. With, with this type of job, I've, uh, I've really, I don't wanna say, um, I've come to enjoy using it, especially for these interior shots. Um, it really helps remove just the common jitters, even when I have like my gimbal do, uh, holding that with my hand, I just really struggle to get smooth movement. I, I don't know. Um, you know, I, I, I practice the ninja walk. I make sure to, you know, do that. But just the whole vest and arm and everything really helps. And I really like using the motion of moving it from the upright position to the downright position and just getting nice smooth shots going up and down. Um, great for equipment, you know, that type of stuff. So, um, 
so yeah so it's a trade um it's nice quick and easy i still have to edit the footage but it's just coloring there's no audio to it so this is stuff that's super versatile for just that like short form or if you want to put it on your website as like a banner video that's just playing behind text you know um that's what's great for and last thing about this is <clears throat> the you know i could be totally off base but my uh my read of the owner is that he wants to use video he doesn't necessarily see exactly the avenue to like put money behind it to really make it work but this is a really nice entry point for him to see okay this looks really nice this is the reaction i got from that type of stuff and this is how we used it so in the future you know let's say you know this upcoming year if we want to do like some ads or something like that we can do it with video um we have an idea of what we want to use so that's kind of my like business strategy um which brings me to the next one so uh that group um so they're called aura trails in town and they do uh, a ton of really great work as far as you know like creating trails and just beautiful like really capturing and utilizing the nature in our area and promoting people to go outside and you know get off your get off the computer get off the phone go experience the world so um they've got a really neat mission and what started that uh, and this is also free work. So I'll say this in my previous vlog I mentioned that that conversation came about because I met one of the um, founders board members of this organization they're a nonprofit and I had just got my drone license So he approached me and was like hey now that you got a drone would you be willing to do this for free? And I, my calculus was yes, I'll do it for free um, It'll be practice with the drone, which is good. Um, I can use that in you know, future promotion, that type of stuff. And then additionally, um, he had said that they would promote my work, do shout outs on social media, and put me as a sponsor uh, around the park while it's getting built. So they did, and they were awesome partners. So this was a really great experience of yes, there's free work. It's not fun to do free work. <laughs> In the sense of like, I just know like, uh, if I was charging, this is what I could be making. Um, but they, we made the deal and they fulfilled their part just as much as I did. So that was great. So this grand opening that we did, um, my big takeaways were, I missed having a second shooter. Um, this was one where I really, there was so much going on and there were so many shots in my head that I was like, oh, I'd really like to get that. And it was just, the timing was off. Like, uh, like the drone shot. It would have been perfect to get the drone footage right when I arrived, but when I arrived, I got it out and then somebody popped the drone up uh, that was from a news station and I was like all right fine whatever so they go and I was like all right well, well while he's doing that it'll be like 10 minutes I'll get my camera get some footage and then as soon as he dropped his I was like okay perfect I'll go grab my drone then another person from another group had a drone there were four drones that went up that day <laughs> so I missed the drone during the perfect golden hour to capture everything that's happening I got their interviews a bunch of other stuff so that was great that i could give to them but i just having the second person would have allowed me to either get that drone shot or get other shots of people doing stuff at certain times that um would have been more ideal that's where i remind myself and i just in the moment i was like this is also a part of free work like if they wanted all that other stuff then we could have had that conversation of like you need it okay well this is the cost of like I, i'm gonna hire a second person to help with that so there's that um, and that led me to this as great as it is to do these trades and, you know, get the recognition. Cause even at the park, they gave me a shout out. They were like, Jake from blue tie productions has consistently, you know, gotten awesome. All the footage that you've seen on social media. So that's great. But I, th my goal for this upcoming year is to try to do at cost. So quick little shout out to uh mike perez uh i really uh he ah, shoot i can't remember the video but his video where he did a spec ad um for a gym and he said to do it at cost i was like that's it right there doing it at cost because then it's like okay you, you get that discount but then also i'm not just losing time and money to do it um so that's my goal going into this next year um big goal number one uh, adjust and raise my prices. Big goal number two is really try not to do free work 
or if you do, like it's really got to be a heck of a trade. <laughs> so we will see. But that's my goal. That's kind of my experience. Um, but it has been nice so far when I'm talking with people, and I think it's all intentionality. When I'm talking with them, I'm very like, if I do this for you for free, like got to reciprocate. I can't just do it for free. So I can't do it for free and just like hope that something happens. So it has to be us actually helping each other out. So um, I don't want to end that job with that statement. So I'll say this. They were awesome partners in this. They really did do a good job of shouting me out and getting my business name out there. Um, I, I met some contacts. Or yeah, I met their contacts and some hopefully potential clients in the future. So that was great. Okay, final thing. Um, I wanted to follow up on my MVP.com order. It was great. So uh, I'm just jacked because I have not had this type of experience selling equipment ever um, or trying to buy equipment. Um, I And also, not sponsored. Um, MPB, if you're listening, please feel free to shout me out. There's another order coming down <laughs> that I know I'm going to do. So um, I'm trying to think. My best ways to encapsulate my overall thoughts with them were this. Number one, the quote thing that they have is great. My only tip is um, don't open like eight different quotes like I did because then you'll get emails for days about like, hey, your quote is about to expire. Um, you can just adjust the one quote that you're working with. So there's that. Additionally, their process, they do what they say. So the equipment that I got, so I got two, uh, I got two, uh, Lumix S5s for what I did. Well, let me show you what the trade was. Okay, so the, for the original quote, I sent in my Lumix S52X. Uh, I did the condition as excellent, um, and then my Atomos Ninja as excellent as well. And then there was like one Panasonic battery um, that happened. So I also put the lens Lumix 85 millimeter f1.8 to like new. So they were going to give me 1250. For the Lumix S52X, they're going to give me 205 for the lens, 215 for the uh, the monitor, uh, 17 bucks for the battery. What they ended up doing, which was incredible, was uh, they upgraded my stuff. So originally, I was going to pay them 32 bucks, which not a bad deal to trade that stuff, in my opinion. And then to trade, <laughs> not a bad deal to trade that stuff. Uh, those three things for two for two camera bodies. I mean, at least in my opinion, I thought that was a great deal. So come back to it. They ended up instead of 1250, they upgrade they upgraded the condition for the S52X to like new, awesome. And then for the accessories that I sent in, which were a cage, um, two batteries, and shoot, there's something else. Oh, I had the original box. I keep boxes for everything. So I get sent the original box, um, all that stuff. So added almost a hundred bucks to it. So I think about 70 bucks um, to it. The lens stayed the same. Uh, the recorder stayed the same, but they bumped that up from 215 to 285 because uh, it had a couple accessories to go with it as well. And also the original box. And then they added another battery, uh, which I sent them, I think it was like three batteries, two Panasonic batteries specifically. And then a third was uh, like a third party Wasabi or whatever. So ended up being, I got the two camera bodies and $95.40 out of it. Not too shabby if you ask me. My big takeaway is this. Um, I've tried a couple times in the past to sell to like an actual camera company, uh, like a camera store, I should say. And they'll give you like, they immediately are like, we will only give you 50% and that's if it's straight in the box and you'll use it once. <laughs> Other than that, we're gonna give you maybe 25% of the value. Uh, one time for, I think it was the Fuji, my Fujifilm X-T3, and I'm not saying that that's like a crazy expensive camera, but this is back in like 2020, they were gonna give me like 200 bucks. And I was like, no way, bro. How can you do that? Like I get making a profit, but damn, come on. So I think this is fair prices. $1320 for the S52X, solid price. Um, I think that's great. And then what is it? Uh, yeah, for so moral story. 
I think they do a fair job. I think you also get what you pay for. Um, and I mean that in a great way. Like the pictures online for the cameras that I got were accurate. They looked exactly like what I got. Um, and they work. They work really great. Um, I'm excited to use them for uh, uh, my job tomorrow. So, yeah. Uh, I'm pumped about MPB. I think they got good stuff. Um, I think they have a great system. Coats work. They're willing to upgrade if you actually give them what they say, the accessories that if you have uh, will give you a better price. They actually do it. And, um, and they're very prompt. I got... Honestly, I don't know what the timeline is, but it was within, like, let's say a week. I did the whole thing. Sent it in, they received it, gave me the quote, sent the stuff. So, um, yeah. One caveat. They will charge you for, for shipping uh, if you want it within a few days. If you're okay with waiting, like, an extra week or two for it, um, that's their, like, free shipping. That's great. I think I ended up paying, I think it was, like, 30 bucks to ship it so that I got it on Wednesday. Um, happened on a Friday. I accepted the the trade on Friday and it was like Friday evening and then yeah paid for shipping got it on Wednesday like they said they would so yeah that's my experience now you know hope it helps and um yeah roll from there so thank you very much I hope you enjoyed the, the vlog um you know if you got any value from it uh please comment below if you have any tips from anything that I was saying um in your experience please comment down below um the ability to help each other out I think it's awesome and just yeah anything like that so thanks for watching and uh, yeah I believe that this vlog is in the bag